Hi, Rite friends, welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today, in honor of the holidays, we will be talking about toys, but they will be toys of an adult nature. Sex toys. You might be able to imagine, don't get a whole lot of this discussion time in classic Roman or Greek literature, but we have still managed to learn a few things about them, especially dildos. So sex toys that are made to mimic male genitalia. So a few things we know about dildos is one, Miletus was a city that was apparently very well known for their manufacture and exportation. I guess it was their thing. It's kind of a weird thing for a city to have, but hey, everybody needs to make a living, so no judgment. <laughs> Second thing is one of the words for dildos is lispos, and if you look at the root of that, it has to do with slipping or gliding, which is lovely. Great word, very appropriate. <laughs> and then last but not least, obviously they didn't have plastic or rubber in ancient Rome or Greece, and so dildos were generally made out of either wood or leather, and they would be prepped before use with olive oil. So I do actually have a quote about dildos from ancient literature, but first I need to give you a little bit of background. So this upcoming passage was written by a poet named Herodas. He lived about the third century BC-ish thereabouts, and he specialized in mimes. Now when I say mimes, do not picture the person with the white face and the invisible wall. We're talking about a different genre. So in ancient Greece and Rome, Mimes were a little bit like sketches that you might see on a sitcom or on a late night show. They just center around kind of ordinary everyday people, so they have nothing to do with myth or gods or heroes, or, you know, any of that like big important stuff. It's just about ordinary Joes living their life and usually it will revolve around some sort of comic or uncomfortable or taboo scenario. Often there is sex involved, so it's that kind of just comic, uh, entertaining thing, and Herodas wrote a lot of these mimes, and so the passage comes from mime number six. So the premise for this sketch, or this mime number six, is that Metro and Corrido are BFFs, they're gal pals, and Metro has come over to Corrido's house, they're having just a casual conversation, and then Metro starts questioning her friend about her famous sex toy. So without further ado, Dear Corrido, who was it who stitched the scarlet dildo for you? And where, Metro, did you see that? Gnosis, daughter of Arina, had it two days ago. Ah, oh, what a fine gift. Gnosis, from whom did she get it? Will you disparage me if I tell you? By these sweet eyes, dear Metro, no one shall hear what you say from Corrido's mouth. Bidas Yubule gave it to her and said that no one should know. Ah, oh, women, this woman will uproot me yet. I paid respect to her plea and gave it to her, Metro, before I used it myself. But snatching it like a windfall, she passed it on even to those who ought not to have it. Many farewells to a friend who is of such a nature. Let her look on some other instead of me as her friend in the future. That she should have lent my property to Gnosis, to whom I do not think... I speak more strongly than is right. May Adrestia not hear. If I had a thousand, I should not hand over one that was rotten. So some great tea spilling, backstabbing, you know, mean girl gossip going on here. Uh, I guess it's a lot of fun, but it's a little strange. It's difficult to translate any kind of casual conversation like this just because it is so casual. There's lots of slang and references and sort of inside jokes and things. So at times it's not entirely clear what they're saying, but you can still get the gist of it. And I think it's pretty funny. Eventually she gets around to saying who the workman was who made the dildo. So it was Caradon and she goes into some details about him. He works at home and sells secretly, for every door now shutters at the tax collectors. But his work, what work it is. You would think you were seeing the handiwork of Athena, not Caradon. When I saw them, for he came with two, Metro, my eyes swelled out at first sight. If you look for another cobbler better disposed to a woman, you will not find one. And then Metro responds, how then did you let the second one go? Metro, what did I not do? 
What persuasion did I not bring to bear on this guy? Kissing him, stroking his bald head, pouring him a sweet drink, calling him daddy, almost giving him my body to use. But if he asked for that too, you should have given it. Yes, I should have, but it is not decent to act unseasonably. So again, the translation here is a little clunky, but the idea is that she had to butter up this fellow quite a lot in order to get the dildos from him and that she would have even have been willing to sleep with him if it came to that. That's the joke, right? Apparently the dildos are just that good. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you get a lot of pleasure out of your holiday. I know I would get a little pleasure out of you maybe checking out my Patreon. <laughs> I will be posting a bonus Q&A video soon, so that will be there as well as all the other content that is on there. But that is enough of my cringy plug. Thank you so much for your patience and your support as always. And I hope all of you have a wonderful holiday. Kairi time.